There are many mistakes one can make as a stacker, but in this episode, we're going to look at the top five mistakes stackers can make and what you can do to avoid them. Coming up. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Campbell's Coins. This list pertains to stackers in general and can be used for either silver or gold stackers or even both. Stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm going to list a bonus mistake stackers can make. Let's jump into the top five. Coming in at number five is not having a goal. I would say this is similar to not having a budget since the two kind of go hand in hand. Not having a goal for your precious metal stack and buying too quickly is a surefire way of going broke. You hear that a collapse is coming and you want to have the financial security, so you buy as quickly and as much as possible to gain some precious metals, but in doing so, you overextend yourself. Now that you have overextended, you're forced to sell off part of the stack because you need the fiat for bills. But because prices haven't gone up much, you end up losing money liquidating portions of your stack. Sound familiar? I'm sure that every stacker has done this at some point. Figure out your monthly budget so you know exactly what you can allocate to buying gold and silver. Now that you've established a budget, make a goal of how much gold and or silver you'd like to stack each month. Maybe it's $100 a month, maybe it's $1,000 a month. If you stick to your goal, over time, these amounts will add up a lot. Stick to your goal, and as difficult as it can be, don't compare your stack to anyone else. This leads me to number four of stacking mistakes, and that is comparing your stack to others. Maybe you see people on YouTube showboating about their gold stack. You've seen the videos titled, My Entire Stack, or All of My Gold. Not only should you avoid people like this, but you also shouldn't compare what you have to theirs. I say you should avoid them because a good stacker knows not to show off their entire stack. This opens them up to a number of situations, but aside from this, you don't know their situation. Maybe they are plunging themselves into debt to buy gold and silver to seem like a show off on here. Maybe they are showing you someone else's gold and or silver as their own. A lot of people like to show off on the gram or on YouTube, but their reality doesn't match the fantasy they bring to the screen. I think there is a quote out there by Theodore Roosevelt. Comparison is the thief of joy, and it is very accurate for many things in our lives. Focus on you and you alone. And number three is buying fractional rounds or bars. When it comes to stacking silver, you should absolutely never buy fractional rounds. When it comes to buying gold, I think fractional gold is more acceptable due to the price, but one shouldn't buy under a tenth of an ounce simply because the premium can be too high. I've done an entire video on fractional silver rounds and why you should never buy them, and you can find that here. But here is a brief synopsis. There are extraordinarily high premiums on fractional silver. Buying one gram, one tenth of an ounce, even a half ounce of silver at a time may be tempting because it's so cheap, but do not do this. This is because buying these amounts is actually more expensive than buying a one ounce round. And I just, I have a few examples to show you here, so please bear with me. Let's look at this one gram Valcambi bar. This is on Atmex. It is $8.49 on January 10th. Silver spot price is $24.79 per ounce. And gold is $18.40 per ounce. So let's just look here. If you're buying one through 49, the cheapest that you can get is five bucks basically if you're paying with a check or wire. If you pay with a credit card, it's $5.20. The cheapest that you can actually get is $4, $3.99, but that's only if you buy 500 or more. So what does that really come out to? An ounce of any precious metal contains 31.1 grams. So if we do, let's just do 4.99 
times 31.1 grams, you're paying $155.18 per ounce if you just stack these one gram bars. So yeah, it might be cheap, $4.99, but if you were just buying a whole bunch of these to equal up one ounce, it is incredibly expensive. This of course does not take into account tax or shipping. Uh, we can go to, I have another example here, these 10th of an ounce silver round buffaloes. Uh, these buffaloes are very common. Look at 10th of an ounce, cheapest is $5.97 a piece. And that's if you buy one to 99. So buying 10 of these would equal one ounce and you're paying close to $60. $60 for 10 of these. Let's go to the half ounce. Sadly, <laughs> the half ounce buffalo is sold out. Um, but I think when I was checking this before I started filming, it was about $17. $17 for this. So if you double that, because that'll equal a full ounce, you're looking at $34. Um, let's go look at what a one ounce buffalo round costs. This is the exact same design. If you are buying one to 20, or excuse me, one to 19, $28.28, .28, paying with a check or wire. If you go with a credit card or PayPal, it's $29.46. The more you buy, the cheaper it is, obviously. It's like buying at Costco. So if you buy over 500, it's $27.28. .28. These prices here on Atmex are <laughs> really, really high over spot, I can tell you that much. Um, you can probably find these a lot cheaper at your LCS and I recommend you go there. It is always cheaper buying the full size for let's say like $28 over the fractional, regardless if it's silver or gold. I recommend buying fractional silver, but only in the form of constitutional silver and only if you're buying at $10 face value at a time. Check out my YouTube series on constitutional silver after this video for my reasons and for more information, you can find that here. The basic reasons being though, constitutional silver is very recognizable and is often near priced, if not at spot pricing. Gold is a slightly different beast. And please, guys, I hear you. But Campbell's, I can't afford an ounce of gold. This is true for most people and where I make an exception to the fractional buying rule. Currently, gold sits at 1840. Uh, but a tenth of an ounce American Gold Eagle will sell on here for, let's look, $254.17. That's if you're buying one to 49 using a check or wire. If you pay with a credit card, it's $264. That is really, really high. If you bought 10 at this price, you're paying well over $2,500 for an ounce of gold if you bought 10 of these. This is why buying fractional silver is, can be problematic. Or excuse me, fractional gold. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Versus if you would have bought this, uh, the same design in one ounce, let's look here, 1956. So if you're paying with a checker wire, one to nine, uh, you're paying $1,956. If you pay with credit card, $2,038. Obviously, the more you buy, the cheaper it is, but it doesn't really go down that much. Look at 1941.79 cents is the cheapest. The tenth of an ounce, if you were buying these, it's nearly $600 more over the one ounce. This seems to be a lot. Uh, I just want you to look at, compare these numbers. The gold, $600 more, that's a lot more. But when you compare to silver percentage wise, premiums on Fractional silver is 300 to 400% over spot versus gold being 30 to 40% over spot. Personally, I buy five gram gold bars and quarter ounce American gold eagles as my savings. It costs me more in premiums, but I'm okay with it because if I need to sell, it's easier to sell a fractional gold piece over a full ounce and that premium that I put out to buy it, I will get back when I sell it. I will say that if you're buying from Atmex, prices really have to climb before you break even. So just be aware before you buy from them. Sometimes one can get fractional gold at really good pricing, but not from Atmex currently. And that was 
way before 2020, and it'll be some time before that becomes a norm again. Hey guys and gals, if you're getting any sort of value from this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you have not already. Now let's get back to the show. The second mistake that stackers make is fixating on the spot price. I've seen stackers just obsess over spot price. Some stacking YouTube channels have really done a good job telling people to only buy at spot price or as close to spot price as possible. This is incredibly moronic thinking for a number of reasons. I bid you farewell and good luck, morons. If a YouTuber is telling you to buy at spot price or worries about the price of their stack in terms of spot price, you should unsubscribe from their channel. Spot price is the current price in the marketplace for a given asset, such as security, commodity, or currency. Spot price is in constant flux from day to day, and in terms of precious metals, its price is for delivery of 5,000 ounces at a single sale. Are you buying 5,000 ounces of a given metal at a time? If not, you should not be asking anyone to sell to you for spot. Spot price does not reflect reality because it is highly manipulated and the price of these metals is suppressed. What do I mean by the price is suppressed? Within the gold and silver community, there is a growing conscious and general belief that the price of gold and silver is manipulated and suppressed. There are numerous examples of it happening, whether it's the US government in the 1960s freezing the price of silver to $1.29 per ounce, or the gold and silver ETFs, these are the paper stocks, discrepancy to physical gold and silver, or actual central banks doing it for their own profit. In 2018, the CFTC fined Deutsche, USB, and HSBC millions of dollars each for spoofing the price of gold and silver markets. Spoofing is a manipulation technique where bids and offers are placed in bad faith to create a misrepresentation of demand and sentiment in the marketplace. The orders are quickly canceled before being filled. In 2019, an ex-employee of JP Morgan was recently convicted of silver price manipulation, and he said that his bosses knew and gave the order. JP Morgan was recently fined in 2020 nearly $1 billion for this manipulation. The DOJ and CFTC just fined Scotiabank $127 million in August 2020 for the spoofing of precious metals markets. Banks don't care if they get caught spoofing markets. They don't care if they get fined because they end up making that, that money back anyways. So they'll pay a billion dollars and they'll make that back, no problem. But why would banks manipulate the price of precious metals? I think the answer goes beyond profit and greed. One thing is for certain though, a rising gold and silver price is indicative of a failing economy. Look at what people run to when an economy goes to crap. Yep, you guessed it, safe haven assets like gold and silver. Instead of looking at spot price, look at your world. Look at your country, look at supplies for those metals, look at the economy. Do things make sense to you? We are in a pandemic with a good portion of the population out of work. Yet the stock market goes up. The stock market is essentially being held up by five massive companies. The rest of them are not doing so hot. Price to earning ratios have soared to record highs. People are out of work. Some states like California are clamping down on businesses even more. With people out of work, they can't pay the rent or the mortgage or get food. Foreclosures are coming and worse. With all the crap going on and the manipulation, does some arbitrary spot price number really matter? As long as you're purchasing these metals below their fundamental value, they are a great deal. Gold and silver are vastly undervalued in relation to everything. Gold is a steal at 1800 and it's a great buy at 2500. Silver is the deal of the century right now, whether it's $18 or $100. They can set prices to $5 an ounce, $0 an ounce, $1000 an ounce. You need to take your mind out of the price. 
it literally does not matter what the paper price is. What is its true fundamental value? I'm going to be doing a video, this is a complete side note, on the true value on gold and silver. That's coming out either next week or the week after. Um, I feel it's very important to get this video out, but I'm trying to get it right and there's some research I'm still doing on it. So stay tuned for that one. And the number one mistake that stackers make is telling people about your stack. This is a catch 22 for some folks, specifically YouTubers and Instagrammers who make a living to share their stack, talking about gold and silver to the world. This is problematic because there are unscrupulous people out there and they may steal from your home. Friends may not steal from you, but maybe they tell somebody else who will steal it. If you're an Instagrammer and YouTube, you don't know everyone who views your page and videos. If they are able to determine where you live and you post that you're on vacation, that's a green light for theft. So what are my solutions to this issue? There's a few. For YouTubers and Instagrammers who do this for a living or to do it to make a popular page, I highly suggest using a PO box. As a seller, one is giving away their address on the label every time they sell. Additionally, one is giving away the same address to other sellers when buying items. Lots of folks do unboxings on camera and it's smart to redact the shipping address and tracking info on your packages before opening them on camera. Not only does a PO box not give away your address to people, it protects your incoming packages from theft from porch pirates when those packages are delivered. I don't know about you, but when I'm away from my house, I'm not able to bring them into my home. Maybe you have seen those YouTube videos or even been a victim to people who drive up to people's houses, run up and take packages near the front door. This type of theft is particularly popular during the holidays when a lot of folks order items online for presents. If you live in a house that's especially close to the street, maybe even a popular street, that makes theft all the much easier. A PO box will also shield you from unhappy customers. I haven't had an issue, but I have heard of some sellers on eBay who have had unhappy customers they then threaten a seller with harm over a perceived issue with an order. If you're a YouTuber or Instagrammer announcing to people you stack precious metals, another solution to this issue is don't keep your stack at home. I recommend a place you can easily access your stack, but also secure it from someone who might stumble upon it. I would not recommend a bank at all. A bank is closed in the evenings, on the weekends, and all holidays that could be closed at a time you really need your stack. If you read the fine print of the contract with your bank, they do not have to give you your items from a safety deposit box when you request them, and I don't think precious metals is covered if a bank robbery were to occur. Many of you are probably saying, hey Campbells, you're showcasing part of your stack, aren't you afraid of this happening? As someone who's put their face out there as a stacker, I know I could be a target, so what do I do? Well, for starters, I don't keep any of my precious metals at my home. All of it is hidden well and safe at different locations where I can get to it if need be and still out of reach from people if they were to stumble upon it. I've heavily invested in gold, which I've buried in several different locations around Pawnee. Or have I? I have done a video regarding ways to protect and hide your stack and you can find that here. For the bonus mistake, it's a bit of a twofer. This mistake is purchasing with a credit card and not buying in bulk. As you saw from the video that I did with my computer, it is cheaper to buy using your bank account rather than your credit card. As you can also see from the cost chart, it is also cheaper the more you buy. Think in terms of buying at Costco. Buying in bulk is cheaper. So if you save up money and do a bulk purchase and purchase from your bank account, it will cost less than buying one or two ounces at a time. Plus nowadays, most states charge tax if the purchase is under a certain dollar amount. For California, that amount for precious metals is $1,500. If you buy over $1,500 here in California, you are not charged tax. So it might behoove someone to save up money, paying with a check or wire, and then uh, purchasing a bunch at a time so that they're not dinged with tax and shipping. Buying with your bank account will take a lot longer for your order to be processed and shipped to you. It takes time for your check to arrive to them once they receive it. 
they wait, I think, at some places there are 10 business days. If you have a good standing with them, it might be a little bit faster uh, for the check to clear. And then they will ship out their order to you. Your order could take like three weeks to arrive to you. But if you're a patient person, it will cost you less in the end. But I think you need to do what is best for you. That's my top five stacking mistakes. I hope you learned something from my list and it helps you whether you're a beginner stacker or a veteran. If you like to mention other stacking mistakes, feel free to tell us in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button. It helps me out tremendously. Hit that bell and subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you all for watching Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.